out to Fabinho. The two fabs. As Andy Robertson goes for goal. Oh my god, it's gone in! Oh my goodness me! Oh, from hero to villain. Oh my god. I can see what's about to happen here. As Andy Robertson has handled the ball with 10 minutes to go. Why on earth he's done that? I don't know. Oh my god, what have you done there? To Jota of all people. Don't tell me. Oh my. I can't. I can't. The second half of extra time. The first half has been and gone. There's not really anything I would change here. This is going to penalties at this rate. Oh god. Stop speaking words. Okay. They're on the ball. Vinicius Jr. whipped in. Back post. Oh, God. Oh, my God, the rebuild. Oh, it's so much worse now as we haven't won it. We go again. folks and welcome back to glory hunter with me on spend gfm it's the 30th of may as uh yeah we uh, we finally have a decision to make i say finally the decision is we go again but i thought it'd be good we would do we do this at the end of the season in glory hunter to run you through what happened what's set to happen next season the plan for the transfer window and then tomorrow transfer special we'll go through the ins and the outs and see how we can uh, restructure and remould this side look i'm wearing the glory hunter t-shirt available now in store if this is the moment to start turning things around then i don't know if there'll ever be a better moment i'm liverpool in the premier league i'm a champions league contender i should be an fa cup winner although liverpool don't win the FA like they've not won the fa cup in real life for like 15 years it takes a while to get there um city by the way is an available option for us now look i don't think in fact i'm pretty certain it's not a job we'll take but killing mbappe being there as well as a few other a few other boys um makes me makes me want to track Messiala's there as well i noticed yeah they've got some really really good players but then again so have we uh some of the other challenges that are out there right now nice would be kind of interesting fifth right now in league one uh, it's not going to surprise you to see that psg eight points clear at the top of the table went unbeaten this year without a goal scorer in the top three uh martial and gabriel barbosa got lil to third so yeah even then not amazing so yeah some interesting uh some interesting decisions for us to make in terms of recruitment of course and when you look back at last season and you look at the top performers of last season it's kind of clear who this team needs to build around going forward so i have some ideas in mind now trent was phenomenal at right back but i am wondering if it's at the point in trent's career which i know Klopp does inside the game if you play to this point and you move trent to play a central midfield role maybe a deep line playmaker role maybe a box-to-box -box role even just because he's so well-rounded maybe you're losing a little bit if you play him as a box-to-box -box. maybe mazala right you still focus a little bit on that maybe crossing ability if you're telling him to push himself out wide a little bit I don't know there's option for, for uh, options for us gets but it gets it forward whenever possible runs with the ball down the right hand side tries on which free kicks like there's things that a playmaker a central playmaker anyway could be really really impactful for if you played him in sort of the right of a two then you know the left wing would be more involved as well because of his ability to switch the play so i am considering moving trent into an advanced option of course the right back situation a situation beyond trent alexander arnold well that's the main man isn't it where is he uh that's the, that's the main man where is he uh terry lamptey who is probably good enough to play there for a season he is a bit of a carl walker in that his pace kind of makes up for the fact that he's not a fantastic defender just sort of a good defender um but the pace makes him an excellent defender so and we could try all that for at least one season there is a heading worry with uh with terry lamptey five foot five doesn't jump can't really head so uh that's the only concern and and even for trent's smallness if you'd call it that a five foot eleven uh 12 jumping reach 11 heading like he's, he's pretty solid for a fullback these days elsewhere then uh, andrew robertson i mean another player that will definitely be a major part of next year when you think about van dyke leaving it's great that andy robertson's still here and still this good basically so there's no concerns with him whatsoever i've not i've not even mentioned him because it's so obvious harland uh this year then didn't quite get the 38 in 38 that i was hoping for but 27 in 28 not too bad and 56 in 44 in all comps i'm setting him the same target i want 38 league goals next year erling then i will say actually since he's been at liverpool i've just noticed it there uh, the most amount of goals he scored i mean you compare his record to last 
year. I certainly got more out of him, even as a pressing forward sometimes. So who knew? Uh, Darwin Nunes, I think for a first so a first season uh, at Liverpool, that's really solid. 29 in 33 starts, uh, 17 goals in 30. Again, super strong. When you're playing next to Haaland, it's probably tough to get goals, but you can see like, just by his attributes, he's still really good, still really strong. Uh, I say that's 27. He's got age just left in his career this is the most important player we maybe need to talk about because of course with lo losing Virgil van Dijk there is a hole left there and unless we can sign someone really good then Aya is going to play there uh, Christoph Aya, Aya, Aya I'm not quite sure how you say it um six foot five still a massive presence from set pieces both in our box and the oppositions and that's a huge factor into why we want to keep him here um it's just again it's been a good squad player for us and always plays well when he plays so I don't feel like it's a huge risk to start him. His mental attributes are really strong. And sometimes you'd worry like, oh, he might be a good defender, but how are his mentals? They're still really good. The problem you've got, basically, and it's a situation clubs come to, and the last time Liverpool had it really was probably with Luis Suarez, is how do you replace someone that good? And the, the, the honest answer is you can't really you can try and get close but you'll never really replace anyone with the mentals that good the, along with the physicals and technicals of course his physicals are stopping starting to drop off hence he's going to italy well done virgil i mean honestly cheers for that very very smart plays by virgil van dyke um you can't really replace him screening is already here he's someone that obviously we want to keep around um he's a really great defender in his own right to be fair like we just look at verge we've got a, an absolute monster next to him uh 32 years of age I'm looking at in terms of defenders. I would have like a little look around. I'm thinking maybe the fridge. I think we'll become available on a free transfer. He might be someone we can pick up. Uh, Umbacano would be a great like straight swap. Marcanos, who's getting a little bit older, but still would be a good option for us maybe. And of course, we'll scour the the regen uh, hierarchy as well. We'll see if we can bring anyone in. And Asio's here as well right now. The Portuguese defender. He's sort of like, he's again, quite similar to Aya, I guess, but he's slightly weaker in some areas. Again, his mental's not quite as good as Christophe Aya's. So probably a player we're more likely to move on than anything. 120 grand a week for a squad player. I prefer my squad players to be on like 70 to 90, not like 70 to 100. So I'm sure I'll break that when it comes around. And the player that I, I can't really move on without talking about is Alfonso. Now this boy who i bought i bought that's so weird i bought him at Bayern as a bit of a oh i'd quite like a regen we'll see who's around i got him in from america i don't know if you remember him when he first signed he was never close to this i don't feel like but has really come on like leaps and bounds come on those mentals on a 20 year old are outrageous i might like and i feel like it's like he might be one of the top players in the world already and yeah he's 20 years of age and at liverpool he will play a key part now whether we play him and he's the, he's probably the biggest issue i've got with whether we play this or whether we go back to something more standard and i'm talking about like the system right maybe you could play trent in there alongside him fabinho continues to play sort of the holding role because again much like andy robertson he might be 33 but he's still brilliant like he's still really really good so that as a little trifecta could be sensational diaz on the left i think you'd probably stick with um he's now overtaken mané for me who i think will have one more year at the club harvey elliott that's the question mark position for me last year didn't that like, him and diaz neither of them actually to be fair had particularly good seasons and harvey elliott for all of the things he's good at he's not got that explosive pace and that's something i'm probably going to look for most in the window so when we come back and i've signed someone with 20 acceleration you'll know why um but the team as i say it, while it needs rebuilding i don't i think the rebuild comes in changing how it operates a little bit and the shape of things and again i really like the idea of playing trent as a midfielder i totally understand an argument that's going to come from some people which is if he's playing that well at right back and it's an argument i make in real life if he's playing that well at right back why would you change it up well he's only got six assists from right back four goals it's still good it's not great and I think you can have a bigger impact playing slightly further forwards. Maybe you've been a part of the the three walls that go towards Erling Haaland on a more regular basis. When you look at his technical attributes, that crossing, first touch, passing technique, agility. Like I like the idea. And again, some of his other stuff that's really good as well. Teamwork, sixteen. Like he's he's almost a ready-made midfielder um, for me. So I, I feel like it's it's if there's ever a moment to do it, it's probably right now with the age of twenty-eight when he's got three or four years to maybe play that role. Especially when someone like Henderson is completely falling away from playing that sort of position anymore it can't really happen and rather than having to go out and buy real good central midfielders i think we've got one here that we can slot straight in speaking of which pellegrini he's an interesting one because of all the assets we have right now in this squad pellegrini's probably one that i might look to move on because one he's 
okay. He's done okay this year. Don't get me wrong. He's been he's been all right. If you look at his overall average, average rating, you can see there. 7.15. If you look at the assists, it's kind of what I'm talking about with Trent. Imagine Trent in that role. Again, Pellegrini, by no means bad at it, but Trent in there might be even better. The bigger thing for me with Pellegrini is he's worth... I thought he was... Right, go back in the video. I'm pretty sure he was just worth 81 million. I thought he was worth far more. I'll click on him again. 21 million now. I thought it was 62 to... I don't know where I am. Okay, well, unless there's been a glitch in the Matrix there, viewers, I thought I could get more for him. Well, I don't, I, I don't really know what's going on. Either way, um, again, someone that might leave. Lucas Hernandez might fall into that bracket as well. I might be more inclined to get a more obvious backup left back and then bring in three or four centre-backs to sort of replace him and Van Dijk and maybe Inacio as well and just sort of formulate that a little bit some a little bit more to what i want i'm kind of curious actually because there's a few defenders i'm thinking of right there's players like tomori where's joe gomez at the moment at milan again it's more of a case that that connection and english um he's played okay for them last year i wonder if he's just like mega injury prone um a couple of three weekers there so yeah he missed a, a fair whack of the season actually when you think about the recovery times on some of these as well you're looking at maybe two and a half months out which is not ideal at all um yeah so again I'm pretty happy with the squad. We're losing Van Dijk, which is terrifying. The big goal, of course, is to continue to enable Haaland. But the bigger task is to get more out of these players. And I think you get more out of these players with these two in here. And I think Alfonso being there all season, I may even play him as an advanced playmaker for a lot of these games. It's a shame I can't really play both of them as playmakers because I think Trent's best role is deep line playmaker on support. Unless you put like... Unless you put him on like a Mazala attack role and you really let him push on and be a part of attacks and have a winger this side, but then have the, a little bit of width more on that side with Diaz being the support system. I don't know. I'm thinking about the way we can construct it next year. I think I'm more likely to go with this than I am that. Um, but a lot of it will depend on who we can find to play that right wing role. Uh, transfer budget wise then, £72 million. It's a fair whack actually to do some business, especially if you can bring in... 50 60 70 million then it'll really enable us to go out and do some cool business um i think we're okay though i'm interested to know though in the comment section what do you think what do you think we need what are we lacking i think we didn't even talk about goalkeepers right allison absolutely fine but in case anyone's wondering no need to replace him at all could play to these 38 and i'd still play him he's like neuer basically so that he's really really good um some of the squad players in there that we may move on like casado i don't really talk about maybe he's someone we move on but i kind of he's sort of like I don't know, Milner's probably a bit harsh. He's, he's more sort of your, your average... It's funny because Liverpool sold him. He's quite like Wijnaldum in that he kind of does everything quite well, but he's not necessarily like your you go-to playmaker. He's a, he's a sensational box to box midfielder, to be fair. He's quite Kessie-like, actually, the more I look at him, the way in which he plays. I mean, if, if I sell him, maybe Kessie in. But there's a few clubs interested. Again, you get 60 to 81 million for him, um, which will probably change to 21 in a minute when I click off and click back on again. Is it going to change different now? No, okay, it's still the same money. Maybe that's what I was looking at originally. Okay, maybe maybe I was confusing my own brain. Um, but he's someone, again, then, that we could maybe move on, reinvest the money, and build a squad a little bit more in our in image. But then, again, I've just compared him to Kessie. And if there's a man in my image in this series, series it's probably him. Uh, let's take a look at Mane as well before we can carry on. You can see, similar to Henderson, the pair of them declining now to a point where it's not really repairable, um, which is going to be problematic. And Gabriel Jesus, again, he's talking about players that are going to bring us some money for us. I don't this say goodbye viewers <laughs> that's, what, that, that's what I'm getting at say goodbye um look the, the table this year was very close if you look at it as an overall goal wise unbelievably with Haaland in our team um Liverpool scored 98 Arsenal 99 goals so impressive from them uh Immobile getting 28 scoring more than Haaland is tough to do so um yeah, maybe we'll just sign a Mobley. I don't know. I'll just take, take away the big threat they've got. Make them reinvest that money. Uh, in terms of performance, though, <sighs> frustrating. When you see that, you, you probably feel like that's the team that should have won the league. And I don't want to delve in too much about how, why and how we lost it, but it's basically you lose two games against Arsenal. That costs you the league. If you're an Everton or City fan, enjoy that as well. Probably your responsibility. Um, but it's some of these draws, isn't it, really? Palace, Watford... Newcastle you probably throw in there Tottenham away Chelsea away United away not that bad but oh man so frustrating um one of those seasons I, I don't know I feel like in another year we win the league and no one gets close but this time around we just had a team that were challenging of course the big fear for me is what are these boys going to get up to in, in the summer what are City going to get up to in the summer I'm sure they've all got big plans and they've already got 
big teams and i'm yeah i don't want to say petrified but i'm more uh more nervous than i should be let's say west brom sheffield united and burnley have gone down then who's joining us in the premier league next season so we should just take a quick look it's one of reading forest i think i did look at this last time yeah west ham and fulham rejoin us in the premier league so it'll be interesting to see how those two boys get on again uh west ham rightfully back in the premier league in my book the premier league side on the west ham it just feels right um and the rest of the, the rest of the sides again i don't think he'll put up any sort of challenge but Again, it's that top six, isn't it? It's like same old, same old. 2027, England is still leaving a lot to do for us right now. Um, I should, I, should, I realise I'm, what, 15 minutes into the video? 14 minutes into the, into the video? Um, I didn't make a video for five days because I had a really sore throat. I'm loving it, viewers. I'm loving this year. I'm loving the last 12 months of being ill all the time. It's really great. Thank you for sticking with the series. And hopefully now we can crack on. Um, although it's a showdown weekend, I'm going to try and get as many videos up as possible uh, at 5 p.m., I'm going to, I would nearly said every day, but as many days as possible. Um, they'll definitely be on tomorrow. I'll put it that way because the transfer window, I'll get through that. And then, uh, yeah, we can record and have some fun with it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I said I don't know what I'm going to do. I've just, I've just talked through the plan. I guess I don't know what it's going to look like. Would I sell Haaland if a bid came in? Um, all right, side points. I'm going to ask you, actually. Side points for everything else. How much money would you accept for Haaland? I'm not saying I'd, I'd sell him. I'm just saying how much would it have to be right okay and i'll tell you mine now 240 i'll probably let him go 240 Ooh. all right then see you tomorrow for some more uh thank you for watching today if you enjoyed it please do leave a like on it if you want to see some more make sure you subscribe and about you but i feel a little talking about it now i feel re-energized i'm excited okay see you soon gang take care and uh yeah love you lots bye